only about 24 hours after his first public comments about this failed Christmas bombing. Now, in remarks from Hawaii, the president set some new deadlines and sharpened his tone. Right now, let's listen to the entire statement. Good morning. Yesterday, I updated the American people on the immediate steps we took, the increased screening and security of air travel to keep our country safe in the wake of the attempted terrorist attack on Christmas Day. And I announced two reviews, a review of our terrorist watch list system and a review of our air travel screening so we can find out what went wrong, fix it, and prevent future attacks. Those reviews began on Sunday and are now underway. Earlier today, I issued the formal guidelines for those reviews and directed the preliminary findings be provided to the White House by this Thursday. It's essential that we diagnose the problems quickly and deal with them immediately. Now, the more comprehensive formal reviews and recommendations for improvement will be completed in the coming weeks, and I'm committed to working with Congress and our intelligence, law enforcement, and homeland security communities to take all necessary steps to protect the country. I wanted to speak to the American people again today because some of this preliminary information that has surfaced in the last 24 hours raises some serious concerns. It's been widely reported that the father of the suspect in the Christmas incident warned U.S. officials in Africa about his son's extremist views. It now appears that weeks ago, this information was passed to a component of our intelligence community but was not effectively distributed so as to get the suspect's name on a no-fly list. There appears to be other deficiencies as well. Even without this one report, there were bits of information available within the intelligence community that could have and should have been pieced together. We've achieved much since 9-11 in terms of collecting information that relates to terrorists and potential terrorist attacks. But it's becoming clear that the system that has been in place for years now is not sufficiently up to date to take full advantage of the information we collect and the knowledge we have. Had this critical information been shared, it could have been uh, compiled with other intelligence and a fuller, clearer picture of the suspect would have emerged. The warning signs would have triggered red flags and the suspect would have never been allowed to board that plane for America. Uh, the professionalism of the men and women in our intelligence, counterterrorism, and law enforcement and homeland security communities is extraordinary. They are some of the most hardworking, most dedicated Americans that I've ever met. In pursuit of our security here at home, they risk their lives day in, day out, in this country and around the world. Few Americans see their work, but all Americans are safer because of their successes. They have targeted and taken out violent extremists, they have disrupted plots, and save countless American lives. They are making real and daily progress in our mission to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat Al-Qaeda and other extremist networks around the world. And for this, every American owes them a profound and lasting debt of gratitude. Moreover, as Secretary Napolitano has said, once the suspect attempted to take down Flight 253, after his attempt, it's clear that passengers and crew our homeland security systems and our aviation security took all appropriate actions. But what's also clear is this. When our government has information on a known extremist and that information is not shared and acted upon as it should have been so that this extremist boards a plane with dangerous explosives that could have cost nearly 300 lives, a systemic failure has occurred. And I consider that totally unacceptable. The reviews I've ordered will surely tell us more, but what already is apparent is that there was a mix of human and systemic failures that contributed to this potential catastrophic breach of security. We need to learn from this episode and act quickly to fix the flaws in our system because our security is at stake and lives are at stake. I fully understand that even when every person charged with ensuring our security does what they are trained to do, even when every system works exactly as intended, there's still no 100% guarantee of success. Yet this should only compel us to work even harder, to be even more innovative and relentless in our efforts. As president, I will do everything in my power to support the men and women in intelligence, law enforcement, and homeland security to make sure they've got the tools and resources they need to keep America safe.
but it's also my job to ensure that our intelligence, law enforcement, and homeland security systems and the people in them are working effectively and held accountable. I intend to fulfill that responsibility and insist on accountability at every level. That's the spirit guiding our reviews into the attempted attack on Christmas Day. That's the spirit that will guide all our efforts in the days and years ahead. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to bring in our senior White House correspondent, Ed Henry. He's with the president in Hawaii. And I also want to bring in our homeland security correspondent, Jim Azurf, who is here. I'll start with you, Ed. Obviously, the president's been under some pressure to, to speak. He did yesterday. He's spoken out again today. What's the sense that you're getting from talking to officials there in terms of updating the public? Why was that necessary today? Well, Susanna, officially, uh, White House aides are saying the president just wanted to give that update, reassure the American people. But you can't help but wonder whether the Republican criticism about being slow to react uh, fed into this at all, because I was really struck by how aggressive the president was, much stronger than yesterday, for example, just in the 24 hours where he was talking about human and, and systemic failures, uh, talking about flaws in the system. We have to move quickly to correct it. Uh, that is a much different posture than we heard just two days ago. Uh, on Sunday on CNN, we heard uh, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano say uh, the system worked. And, and she also claimed, uh, you know, that, that things were going pretty well, basically. She walked that back on Monday and said, look, I meant that once the incident happened, uh, that, that things worked well. And the president did repeat that today. But you have to wonder whether the administration uh, hopes now uh, that the statement that was made today about accountability, about what went wrong in getting this right, had been made a couple of days ago, Susan. Uh, Gina, I also want to ask you, the president, what did he mean when he said there were these bits of information available in the intelligence community that could have and should have been pieced together? What do we understand? Well, it's interesting. We've been told repeatedly uh, by people throughout the government uh, that this individual was not on anybody's radar screen until his father went to the embassy. The father spoke to them, they passed the information on and so forth. But we do know that the intelligence agencies have been going back, they have been combing through everything, uh, trying to find out if there was anything they missed. And it would seem to me, given the way the president was speaking, the specifics of what he was saying, they have clearly found something. There is something there that should have been pieced together and wasn't. And he was preemptively getting out in front of a bus, I would speculate, and I have to admit that speculation uh, that's about to hit. Uh, then let's bring it Ed here, because uh, do we expect that we're going to hear from the president in the coming days? Perhaps there is more information that is uh, imminent? Well, you know, Suzanne, what's interesting is that uh, just 24 hours ago, uh, White House aides were suggesting uh, it was unlikely we'd hear from the president uh, anytime soon. He was going back to vacation. So it's hard to speculate when he'll come back, but I think Gene's right on the money with the fact that there's a lot going on behind the scenes, obviously, with this investigation. Uh, and the fact that the president also today said, I have a deadline of Thursday. That's pretty quick turnaround. 48 more hours for intelligence officials to come back to him with preliminary findings of what went wrong. That does suggest, as Gene notes, um, that there's information kicking around uh, and they want answers very quickly here because they think something may be coming out that's going to suggest there's some serious flaws, as the president himself noted. Uh, and in fairness to the president, he's saying he wants to get ahead of it and wants to correct it. And, and uh, he's obviously taking a much more aggressive tone than we saw just two days ago, Susan. Sure, Ed, I think there's some fast-moving developments. I, I want Gene to listen to what the spokesman from Yemen, the ambassador office, told me earlier today in the Situation Room about what the Yemeni government is doing. For the time being, what we know on ground is he was uh, in, in Yemen. He attended that school. One of the mosques that he was visiting in the old city of Sana'a, we've been uh, surveilling and we're questioning some of the people that uh, are there to see where the 